yes. Welcome, everybody, to the World Class Cast. I am your host, Jerry Bostic, the owner of World Class. And I and with me today is one of my good friends, the one and only Andrew Anderson. How are you, Jerry? I'm, I, I look forward to... Uh... Look forward to this all week when I found out I was going to be on it with you. I was just like, tickled pink. That's what everybody says. And I know everybody is full of crap. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's I'm good not. times. Good times. My eyes are blue. <laughs> not brown, huh? No, 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 no. And my nose is not brown either, like some people are, you know? So, you know, but, I've noticed that there's a good fair share of people in the wrestling business that their nose is brown. Yeah. <laughs> But it's only at the right times. It's only at the right but times. That's the one thing. That's what that's that's the one thing. I've never kept my nose brown. I've always been, uh, as some people would say, transparent. Because I mean, I've always been. You know, you should know me by now. I am what you get. You know what I'm saying? I've yeah, I've, 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 I've I have always admired that about you. I think that's really how you should be. And I and, you know I don't think my nose has ever been brown either. It stayed big, no. but it's never been brown. <laughs> <laughs> Knows. It's just been broken a few times. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, always been big. You know, I would never be one to have plastic surgery, but if I did, that'd probably be exactly what it was on. I would get rid of my big nose, but then it wouldn't be me anymore because it would be noticeable. <laughs> That's true. You know, your, your nose really ain't that big, but you know what? If you think so, you're the boss. Hey, I'm going to have a brown nose. Yeah, your nose is big, boss. I think more people, there's one guy that usually joins these, and he always uh, used to make fun of me for my forehead. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I'm right behind you right there, man. The receding hairline. <laughs> I sneeze, as Bill After would say, I sneeze and there's a follicle count in the air. Uh, that's great. I, man, I hope Bill's doing well. I haven't talked to him in a long time. He is. Uh, we spoke. We share our birthday together, so we speak every every October twenty second. Him and I, um, we we exchange birthday hugs over the phone, and now it's on Zoom. And you know, we're up. We call each other our birthday twins. So I, I've known Bill for about twenty five years, and uh, wow. he's covered a lot of my stuff. You know, I mean, I I look at three guys um, that that I really appreciate. Camera that are, that really photographed history of wrestling. Um, Bill After, George Napolitano, and Scott Romer. Those are three guys that I really have always um, really admired. They they did a lot for the business, the industry, and get and, and Bill and and George Napolitano especially. The two of them had taken a young guy like me and made sure I got my my fair share from the Indies um, publicity and 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 uh, put me over, so to speak. You know, and it's it's been really cool. You know. So you so, recently and, celebrated your birthday. I noticed yeah. before we went live that you had one of your birthday gifts. Why don't you tell everybody about this? I think it's amazing. What do you think that is? How many people go to a hotel room, meet their friend who's just about to perform on stage, and uh, I'm going to see the Ace Frehley Alice Cooper tour. Um, uh, Ace brought me into Tupelo, Mississippi for my birthday, and he says, uh, they tell me to wait in the lobby and don't move. So I'm waiting at the lobby. I'm at the bar. I'm not moving. Of course, you can't leave me at the bar. But <laughs> so I'm not moving. And and my buddy, my buddy uh, Craig Massey, you know Craig. Craig Massey yes. is there with yes. me, and uh, and we're there down in double shots of vodka, and 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 uh, he's having double shots of vodka Red Bull. I'm having double Jack and diets, and uh, you know, and uh, then Ace says, "You go. Hope you're not too drunk, because you know I've been sober for like 15 years now, 14 years." And he goes, "Hope you're not too drunk. Come on upstairs." I was like. Now you're going on stage in like an hour, you know. He's like, Come on, come on up, come on up. I need you to help me move something. So I go up, and there's a guitar case on the bed. He says, I can't move this. I said, What are you talking about? He said, I can't move it, it's too heavy. Open it up and see what the fuck's in it. I open it up, and Gibson Epiphone. Man, I can't I mean, even Gibson. imagine it. That would probably almost put me in tears. I mean, what was your oh, reaction to that? <laughs> well. Well, the, the initial one, they caught it on film, and I was, like, almost in tears. I was like, Ace, this is the best freaking thing anybody's gotten me in 54 years. You know, it's, a, it, you know, I mean, fuck. I mean, I grew up um, idolizing the guys in Kiss, just like I grew up idolizing a lot of the, you know, like Joe Laurinaitis, a friend of ours, passed away. And a lot of these guys that I grew up and you grew up. Rest in peace, Joe. Rest friends. in peace. Man. Yeah, they're our friends now. And, you, um, you know, I think uh, – I think I actually I could be wrong, but wasn't I the one that told you that Joe passed away? Can I seen it and I called you? Called you. Me up that morning. 
And I remember, uh, you know, we just both sat there and cried on the yeah. phone. You called me that yeah. morning, you know. You know, Joe was such a good my dude. connection to you. Yeah, it was. Joe fact. was. Yeah, that was my connection to you, and uh, Joe introduced us together, and and we became friends through Joe, and uh, Joe was our mutual friend, and uh, so you know, it it it, it, it kind of really, you know, we lost Joe, but now we have each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, look, and, look, you know, I'm really excited too. Uh, Kim is joining us for Christmas Star Wars, and I and I, I love she'll keep coming to the shows. And you know, Kim, for those of you who don't know, Kim is uh, was is Joe's wife, and uh, Joe's widow, wonderful, yeah. wonderful lady, wonderful lady. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a I'm a big fan of Joe's family. You know, I I uh, had the pleasure, well, you know, of DJ and his daughter's wedding, and just so many great people, man. And well, Jaden you know, Jaden just got a uh, uh, he's on working for the NWA now. I understand. Yeah, I saw uh, he had a match, I guess, or he has an upcoming match. Maybe it was tonight on fight. I'm not sure exactly when the NWA uh, airs. Do what? He's working Tim Storm, I think. He's wrestling. Yeah, that's right. You know, I miss a lot of the NWA because it costs money. (laughs) What doesn't these days, right? Oh, I'm telling you. So, So, Andrew, tell everybody what made you get into wrestling and, and tell them how long you've been in the business, who trained you and all that good stuff. It's going to go on uh, 26 and a half years now, almost 27 years in April. Um, I first met uh, by the name of Rocky Jones, who used to wrestle at, under the name in Portland as Mike Masters. He was when I was in college in 1989, I was graduating college and, you know, yes, right. 89. I'm old, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Look good, I you know. It happens when you have that that Olympian immortality gene going through you. You know, you know the the the, the, the hammer of the gods lives in your veins. You know, so but <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, yeah, I met Rocky Jones, um, aka Mike Masters, and I met him at a, a bar in uh, in New Jersey called Fatso Fogarty's, where we all used to go. It was a college bar, and one night there was nobody there. It was a dead night, and I want to talk to him, and he. He, had, he was jacked up and he looked really good. And I said, you look like you could be a worker. Like a, I, well, now I call him a worker, but a wrestler. And he said, he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, I wrestled. And, you know, pretty soon, you know, I mean, he confirmed everything. He had Hacksaw Jim Duggan on the phone, who was a major star at the time. And he put Hacksaw on the phone with me and everything. And he used to room with uh, with uh, with the, with um, Mike Hagstrom and Jake Roberts. And, you know, it was pretty cool. So, so I, I, I but, but nothing came. He said, I, I goes, why don't you, he goes, you're a big kid. Why don't you come up and train? And. I didn't think nothing of it. And then, you know, years later, I mean, down the road, I, I was bouncing uh, a few miles away and I, 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 I was working as an investment banker for Hibbert Brown in uh, Manhattan. And uh, then I worked, before that, I worked for Payne Weber for a little bit. And uh, in 90, 91, 92, I met the Metal Maniac and Jimmy Snooker. They came into a bar and, and uh, I literally was throwing somebody out when they were walking in. I literally dropped the guy in his head. And I just walked over, and I want to. The bar, the, the owner got mad at me, and I told the guy to piss off. And I want to hanging out with Jimmy and 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 Jeff drinking with them, and, and then Jimmy just did the whole thing. At the end of the night, he goes, he goes "Brother, I want to talk to you." Exactly how he said it. I want. <laughs> and he said, "You ever think of being a wrestler? You look big." And he goes, "You look like a wrestler." So one thing led to another, and Jimmy brought me up to Lake Hiawatha, New Jersey, and uh, introduced me to. Uh, uh, Kodiak Bear and Gino Caruso and two guys that wrestled as the executioners after um, after uh, uh, Kowalski and, and Stud gave up the mantle of the executioners WWE. These guys were wrestled in, as the executioners, Jerry Fazio and Terry Manton. And uh, and Jimmy was gave me my first few bumps and uh, and uh, and Maniac. They they broke me kind of broke me into the business with Terry Manton and uh, Gino and. And then before you know it, I was on the. Can't hear you. Can you there see me? Yeah, I can see you and hear you. Uh, all right. Um, and, and then I can't see you, though. But uh, they brought me back in uh, to uh, on the road to uh, to some shows. And, and they brought me backstage. And there was a guy that didn't show up. And all of a sudden, Jimmy said, you know, you're going to have to wrestle me. There you are. I got you now. And uh, he said, "You're gonna have to wrestle me." And I said, "Whoa!" And Jimmy said, "Brother, he, brother, he goes relax." So he says, "He says relax." He gave me a couple of Budweisers because that's what Jimmy drank. And 
I had a shot of something, and then all of a sudden I went out and I, I had a match with Jimmy, and Jimmy pretty much did everything. I remember him saying, just to do a push, do a sit up when, when I come off the, the top rope. Well, he came off the second rope because he knew I was shitting myself the whole time. <laughs> match into pro wrestling where I basically came in, attacked Jimmy from behind, hit him a few times. He reversed me. I shot him out of the ropes. He reversed me. I hit the buckle, came out. He caught me with a scoop slam, slammed me, and went to the game. Yeah. Standing, um, uh, a drop to his knees, gave me a headbutt, and then went up to the second rope and gave me a, a splash, and that was it. My first real match where I was actually trained properly was against Gino Caruso, and the second match was against the Barbarian, and I just remember. Wow, your second match was against the Barbarian. Yep, and the Barbarian, and Jimmy and everybody tell me, don't, whatever you do, don't chop the Barbarian. He's going to tell you to chop him, but don't chop him. So me, I'm like shit myself. Oh my god, I better not chop. Barb shoots me in the corner, comes at me, tells me to duck the clothesline. He clotheslines, he get, lands, he hits the buckle hard, front chest of the buckle, turns around, says, "Chop me." <laughs> now I'm looking at him like, and he goes, "Chop me," and I'm like, and he's like, "Brother, chop me." So I turn around, I hit him like this, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, all the time, I got a turtle head coming out of my pants. You know, I, I think I think I marked my laundry at that moment. Well, Barb grabbed me by my ears, pulled me off my feet, threw me into the corner, and gave me about seven or eight overhands that I thought my chest was concave. And then he turned me and re said, "Reverse me, chop me." And then I chopped him. And I realized I was getting ribbed because everybody was in the back was laughing at their asses off watching me through the curtain. So here I was, this green kid getting the shit beaten out of him. That was after, uh, you know, I mean, they 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 ribbed me and they told me that uh, I had I couldn't wrestle because I had to get a, a piss test before I went out to wrestle. So here I am thinking to myself, with walking around with a cup of urine, wondering where the doc is to give it to him. <laughs> no doc, there's no piss test, and I'm walking around. So I went through I went through all the, the the hazing. The hazing that I went through was mild compared to what I've done to people. You know, I mean, my ribs have been freaking legendary, but you know, so but. Um, I went through some shit too, you know, but uh, it was cool. And, you know, I mean, 27 years later, you know, 26 and a half years later, it's just, um, I, I, I love it. I still love it, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be working with you in world class championship wrestling and world class wrestling revolution. I mean, it's, 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 um, it's a great time for wrestling fans because uh, we have so many different types of wrestling, so many different brands out there and so many different traditional wrestling companies that are coming back that 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 the owners like you and like jeff weaver for championship wrestling from florida value the history value the brand name value the workers that represented the company the wrestlers who bled sweat and 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 broke their bodies for the fans for, from from texas to florida and i appreciate that and i'm so proud to be working for these two great companies championship wrestling from florida and world-class wrestling revolution you know, I was so proud to be part of SWE Fury when it was booming, <coughs> um, and it was an amazing thing. And Whoa. I think that 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 they really had the potential to basically that company was pissing on everything that was out there. You know, I mean, you had the greatest wrestler on the planet, Charlie Haas. Yes, Charlie, I will say that you are the greatest wrestler on the planet. You are the greatest. You you know, the man is. And what a great mind. What a great wrestling mind. He's simply amazing. The guy knows his shit. You know, he's got it down. I mean, um, uh, you have Rodney Mack. You had uh, Moonshine Mantel, Ryan Mantel, who's making his uh, his fourth AEW uh, TV on Dark appearance tonight against Wardlow. Um, so you had guys like that. And you, you, Rodney and Jazz. Um, running the back with Kevin Sullivan and you had Teddy Long, you had James Beard. It was just an amazing time to, to, uh, to, to, and, and a great company to be involved with, you know, I mean, I hate to say, you know, uh, I don't know what happened, why, why it went down so quickly. It just fizzled, you know, I mean, uh, I think a lot of it had to do when, when, when the, the blood hunter left, he was banned from the, from SWE. And I think a lot had to do with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't really, you know, I, I think his brand of wrestling and everything was was crucial to the point of our success. And Hannibal being involved with Hannibal TV was definitely uh, extremely important. Sorry, something popped up my thing. 
uh, Hannibal TV was extremely crucial in, in the launch pad off the ground as it also was doing with world class right now, you know, so I think that Absolutely. is a crew, you know, yeah, you know, I think that uh, I'm glad you brought it up because I think, uh, you know, SWE was a special promotion, you know, it came, what? it came along and really thrived during COVID, you know, where there wasn't a lot of companies running. I mean, it was very intelligent by uh, Tom Lance to do, to push during that time, Jason Jarrett, you know, all the people that you mentioned, uh, it, it was a special promotion. And, I mean, and it's like we said on here last week, sometimes, you know, a company just grows too fast. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't understand is on our level, it's really hard to handle whenever you go through that growth phase because you don't have the luxury of having a full staff like a WWE or an AEW. And, and it takes everybody uh, working together and, and, and doing wearing a lot of hats that you normally yeah. don't have to wear in a bigger company. And I would, you know, I would have repeatedly, I said, Tom, so how's everything going? He'd be like, we're almost there. We're right there. We're right there. And we were, we yeah, were, I mean, you know, it was, it was, no, it was it, it's no different than like the, uh, you know, the push we made a couple of years ago, you get caught between being an indie company and being a major company. You're somewhere in between and you're trying to navigate the waters to get to where you want to go. And, you know, there's really no handbook on how to get there. No, uh, there's no, there's no, uh, there's a lot of situations that you go through that you don't know the necessarily right answer. So you just take a educated guess, you know, and, and, you know, it helps having a lot a talented cast around you and, you know, but there, it's very taxing. I can say from in my experience, you know, it's very taxing on, on a promoter because you're just one person, you know? Yep. And, well, you have, you have already, you're one step ahead of two steps ahead of where you were when you were uh, a few years back. You have Eric Embry, who's one of the greatest minds in professional wrestling, along with the genius himself, the maestro, as I call him, um, <laughs> or as I call him, Papa Smurf, Kevin Sullivan. So, you know, you have Kevin, um, who's just, you know, I mean, uh, uh, listen, I mean, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to say something that 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 I was I was at the Cauliflower Alley and Rey Mysterio got a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, Rob Van Dam got an award. Um. Uh, uh, the Road Warriors got inducted. Um, and out of everybody there, there wasn't one person that did not give Kevin Sullivan accolades for jump starting their career and having such a strong positive influence on the pro wrestling business and 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 putting everything together and being the man, the catalyst that made everything from John Arizzi, who was a uh, uh, um. Oh, he was the host, and he ran um, a bunch of shows overseas, and he had Kevin as on as part of his roster and everything. I mean, these guys, they all all paid tribute and and homage to to Kevin Sullivan because he is, you know. I mean, he took me out of mothballs, and all of a sudden said he didn't like the way I was being branded in in SWA, and he didn't like it, and he said we we got to turn you baby. And the reason why he wanted to turn me baby was because. He wanted to turn me but into something else down the road, which we wound up doing in Florida, in Indianapolis, and in uh, once again in, uh, in 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 Portland, Oregon. Uh, they rebranded me as the Purple Haze. So absolutely, uh, and, and explain to people the whole Purple Haze thing. And you know, well, Kevin, a really cool story. Yeah, Kevin was part of uh, a, a really strong well, angle with Dusty Rhodes and Blackjack Mulligan and Wahoo McDaniel and and. Uh, and the Grams and uh, in Florida in the early '80s, and as part of that feud, he he turned to the dark side and he brought back Maniac Mark Lewin, um, who was at the time a, a long time baby face, and he went, we would run from baby to heel over the years, and he was a legend in the business, and he brought him in and rebranded him as the Purple Haze to sort of rejuvenate his career, and he brought him out of the ocean, uh, that whole Army of Darkness, all satanic angle and everything like that, and you know, and Kevin said, you know. He goes, you're my new haze, and I said, what? I mean, <laughs> and he said, he goes, you, he goes, you, he goes, you're the purple haze. So he started calling me purple haze. They were like, that's purple haze, introducing me to people, and people were like, that's not Mark Lewin, you know. And the people that were knowledgeable about pro wrestling were like, but then when we came out and did it, and he he went out and, and said, he goes, here, he goes, he goes, Marky's robe, and I said, I said it's kind of really tattered and messy and everything you know he's like it's it's like 45 years old put it on 
I'm like, I was like, looked at him, I don't, but I don't want to. He was like, put it on. I said, can't we wash it first? And he's like, put it on. So I put it on. <laughs> yeah, you don't know where it's been, and especially it, in it, wrestling. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> clean. It, smelled, it didn't smell like mothballs. It smelled kind of mildewy. So I went and washed it. Kevin goes, why the hell did you wash it for? You're going to fuck it up. It's old. I said, it smelled. He goes, so what? So, and he was about, anyway, so. I, I, I kind of inherited it, and then uh, he got Mark's permission, and I spoke to Mark, and you know, through him. And Mark is married to the the princess of Singapore, so he's eighty eighty three years old. He's married to the princess of Singapore. He still squats three hundred some odd pounds every freaking week. He still, um, still you know, smokes a couple of doobies here and there, and you know, and and drinks a lot of. Uh, um, I think he drinks a lot of Crown Royal like his dad did from what Kevin told me. He still drinks a, a, a couple of glasses of Crown Royal a day. And he, he said, uh, I said to Kevin, I said, Kevin, why does he still do that if he's 83? He's like, because he said Mark's exactly answer were, was if I stop, I'll die. And so Kevin said that Mark is just doing amazing where he is and everything like that. And we're, we're still trying to get him out to film an angle where him and I both come out of the ocean together. So <laughs> that would be classic. That yeah. Be classic. So that would be really cool. And, you know, um, cause if I recall the purple haze was also part of world class championship wrestling. Mark Lewin was married, managed Mark by skin Lewin. as the purple haze maniac. Mark Lewin was the purple haze. They would say literally the purple haze maniac. Mark Lewin, I could still remember Mark Lawrence, you know, uh, saying that. So, Mark Lawrence, the true voice of world class, and he will be joining us at Christmas Star Wars December 11th. It, to me, it's amazing, Mark, coming back into the fall. Oh, dude, that is just, that is just like, all I got to say is when you put posted that and you announced that I was part of the show, to me, it was pop, pop <laughs> top 10, you know what I'm saying? That was like... Yeah. I think sometimes Mark doesn't understand just how important he is to the history of wrestling because he's such a humble guy. Major impact in wrestling i mean one of the one of the premier announcers of his day oh yeah he, he was like he was he called it like it is he was so into it so serious and so i mean it was just he was just phenomenal you know i mean it was just such a special time in wrestling you know? yeah yeah let's I go mean, through some of these uh comments real quick we'll kind of get caught up on what people have said looks like we had a uh, Lurvy 1963 says quite a few SWE wrestlers joining world class. Who's next? The notorious manager Nigel Rabbit. Well, I'll ask you, Andrew, since you worked there for a while. Of the people that's not with us at this point, who would you like to see eventually show up in world class from SWE? I would love to see Bam Bam Malone and Obi Bryan. You know, they were my tag team partners for a while, um, and they were also my opponents on and off. And I would love to see them make their debut. I would also, uh, I would love to see Ivan Warsaw. He's a Texas guy, and he's a phenomenal, amazing. That guy player. lives in Texas? I think he does, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, I saw some of his, I guess it was, I think it was Enzo. He With was Enzo. Enzo. Uh, Ivan Warsaw. Amazing. Best performers on the planet, underrated, underrated. I mean, I mean, I mean um, it's just uh, the, 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 the talent that you guys have amassed already is just intense i mean uh hell you know uh rodney rodney mack i mean like i said rodney was my tag team partner for a few times in uh in the nwa we, we me and rodney had some great tag team we had a great tag team matching and snitsky and mike knox two giants um snitsky, yeah yeah good times man uh so ronnie ronnie and ronnie will always be one of the toughest guys i've ever met and uh He's doing his own thing at the Dog Pound, and 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 they're very successful. And I'll, I think I'm going to be there on January 29th, working for them. Um, you know, so. Um, yeah, but, for those of you in the San Antonio area, uh, you know, with SWE kind of going in two different directions, you know, uh, you know the promotions uh, just not running at the moment, and you have uh, a lot of the talent in San Antonio at Dog Pound, and a lot of the talent with us at World Class. If you're in the San Antonio area, you should definitely check out Dog Pound. Rodney and Jazz, super people. You know, a lot of super people on their shows. Uh, and family to me, man. Family to me. That's the you know, I I've I've said it before and I said it again. A lot of the guys from SWE became like family and were family to me 
before that and then afterwards. Charlie and I know each other for 25 years, 24 years. Charlie Haas has been one of my first friends I made in the business. When he broke in, you got to remember, he came out of Seton Hall and worked in the New Jersey area, Jersey All Pro Wrestling. Um, um, he worked in uh, um, uh, Jersey Championship Wrestling, JCW. I was actually the first Jersey Championship Wrestling heavyweight champion. He was the first oh, tag team. Yeah. Jersey Championship Wrestling, the Haas brothers. So it was it was me. I was their heavyweight champion. Charlie and, and Russ were the tag team champions. So so I had that connection. I'll always have the connection to him and Russ, you know, because uh, I remember Russ ribbing me across the table. We were texting each other across the table back. Uh, it, was, it was just funny stuff. I just remember. And then uh, I just remember that December when I got the call that Russ passed away. Um, I, was in, uh, I was going to visit the tree in, the, in Rockefeller Center. I think it was either late November, or early December. I just remember getting that call. It was, or it was, it might have even been after Christmas. I just remember that call. It was very devastating, you know. So I have, I'll always have that connection to Charlie Haas. Charlie's always been a good friend to me and a brother. And uh, you know, like I, I always said it, underrated, one of probably the greatest wrestler pound for pound on the planet. You know. Uh, did you see that picture he posted? I guess it was probably a couple of days ago. He's looking it, in phenomenal shape. Yeah. Speaking of phenomenal shape, baby. You know? Yeah, you're holding your own too. I thought you were gonna say me, but then you started flexing. Oh, you always look good. You always, look good. <laughs> you always look good. I mean, I, we, I blew up a little bit. I got, I, I got, um, I got pulled aside at, at SW and I said, and by basically, they actually had Charlie call me up and say, Charlie called me up and said, Hey, man, you know, you, uh, I, I just want to give you a heads up that they're saying you, you know, you know, you got a little heavy and you, you got to lose a little weight, man. You, know, you know the way Charlie goes off. So I don't know you got to lose a little weight and you know get, get in a better shape and I'll help you along the way. If you need me to help you, I'll help you. And I said, I do a pretty good Charlie Haas, don't I? So I said, so he was like, you got to help me. You got to let me help you out. And, and then I went ahead and I said, Charlie, I'm ahead of the game already. I dropped 15 pounds. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> that was funny. So then, and then I dropped. So now it's a total of 59. Wow. What I eat today, 62 pounds. So between 59 and 62 pounds. Well, what do you have to say for anybody that's watching that might be going through weight issues that might want to lose weight? What kind of help can you give them? SSP Nutrition, sponsored by Andrew Anderson, right there. So <laughs> SSP. I mean, that was a shameless plug, which is funny because I had no idea you were going to give it. <laughs> SSP, we have pre workout, we have a uh, we have post workout, we have all types of protein. You know, SSP is one of my one of the products which I endorse. So there you go, right there. Put on That's some. That's great. Where, where do they get SSP at? Like, yeah. what's the website? You can get SSP Scientific Sports Products Nutrition at Amazon.com. So you can get it. And it's fully Anderson endorsed, but that's not why you asked me. I say anybody having weight issues, um, you know, weight, weight starts within yourself. You know, I mean, some people, can, if it's hormonal or if it's something wrong like that. But for me, it was just, it was binging. It was binging. I was eating at night. I was drinking a lot of freaking beer, especially during the COVID times, you know, just sitting home drinking bottles and bottles of wine. Thank you, Niles Plunkett. Uh, uh, wow. Drinking that wine, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Another great and, person, Niles Plunkett. Yeah. I love Niles. Great. I'd dude. love to see him work for us, you know? I mean, I'd love to see him. I'm because sure that he him. will. I have no doubt. I mean, he's worked him for me great dude i understand it's sometimes tag team partners working for you oh flex serba yes you know uh barry is one of my favorite human beings you i know? love it. barry's a very diverse one of the one of the the most under un, un, underrated characters and performers in the business just like niles plunkett too one of the most underrated characters barry is capable of doing anything you want him to do and he is shameless. He will do whatever you want. You know, whenever we were doing a lot of uh, pop culture crossovers in the movies and sports and stuff like that, Barry was game for whatever. In fact, he relished it. Like, he loved doing these roles. Yeah, that, he's a great yeah, guy. He's such a good dude. Man. I mean, I don't know him all that well, but but the, the, the time that I've spent with him was always a blast, man. We, we, we got along really good and, you know, <laughs> easy going, man. He's easy going. I feel like I know him my whole life, you know. It's just like, one of those guys that you just like get along with and you click and you know the guy is so knowledgeable about the business he's like it's it's like niles craig he's oh, just yeah. I mean, you know they're like two peas in a pot yeah yeah so but yeah so i got it i i but um losing weight is uh it, i did it by uh intermittent fasting and i just never stopped you know i i keep doing it now you 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 break the fast every few few days or sometimes i'll keep going for a week and then you break it for two days because you shock the body into losing more weight that's how i figured out how to do it 
Um, in the meantime, I've been training like a son of a bitch. You know, I lost a lot of a lot of my my fabled Olympian strength, but you know what? But uh, I managed to uh, I managed to uh, make up for it with uh, with uh, repetitions, and uh, and I'm still pretty pretty. Don't don't let it fool you. I'm still stronger than the average bear, you know. But uh, I'm just not doing that crazy 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 amount of weight, which was like, taking its toll on my joints. You know, I mean, knock on wood, my knees or knock on wood, my. Uh, that's better, like that, right? Mm-hmm. Was that, that a hot like real wood? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a quote. That was from Bill After, by the way. Bill After used to do this. He used to knock on, on, on the. And it was so in sync. Oh yeah, always with him. He was funny. This so, is a good one. We got Mike D on here, and he says, "You look like Michael P. S. Hayes." <laughs> I kind of see it in a sense. I get a lot of that, and I get a lot of hacksaw sometimes, and Baby John Stud. So, Sean Blue wants to know: Have you ever fought the Warlord? You fought Barbarian. Have you mixed it up with the Warlord? Wrestled Barb and Warlord. Myself and Rick Fuller have wrestled Barbarian and Warlord on probably every continent on the country except Antarctica. So, <laughs> but Rick, Big Rick Fuller was my tag team partner for a while. We feuded with Barb and Warlord over the years, all, all over the place. I've, I've um, had a lot of matches with Barbarian and Warlord. And Terry the Warlord is one of the greatest, nicest guys. Terry Sapinski, one of the best. One of my best friends on the planet he calls me up every holiday. We still stay in touch. Uh, he's still a big son of a bitch. Looks great. He's had some neck issues and some some shoulder issues, but I mean, he's he still looks. I think phenomenal. we're all headed for neck issues. Yeah, we already so it, all have them. <laughs> yeah, Terry and Barb still two of my best friends. Yeah, the Warlord and Barbarian still two of my best friends. You know, love Jason them. Jarrett's actually on. So hey, Jason. Jason, I miss you, buddy. Uh, I miss uh, he you. said Warsaw is actually out of Arkansas. So that's I mean that's great. Yeah. That's not very far at all. What do you think of that? <laughs> Hopefully he's still with us. I don't know when he had that. Oh, that comment's not that old. It was like eight minutes. But, you know, if Warsaw is in Arkansas. Uh, you know, oh, he's in Arkansas. Yeah, that's not we that definitely, far. We definitely need to, to get in touch with him. Because I thought that whole, uh, you know, the whole angle with uh, that they did with, you know, it's him unfinished. and Enzo, I thought it was great. Great. It's unfinished business between the two of them. So between him and Enzo, you know, I mean, I already spoke to Enzo and Enzo has definitely, definitely um, had some interest in coming into world class. I spoke to him last week. I saw him at Chiller Theater um, and he's definitely, definitely, it, it, he, he told me and Kevin both that he is definitely very interested in working for you. So great. Yeah. I, you know, I talked to, I guess, Doug, the guy that, that represents him and I. Uh, yeah. Doug, and awesome. Yeah. Not- Doug is a great dude. I like Doug. Very nice. Yeah, guy. Doug's a really good guy. Good friend. And Doug actually has helped me a lot too. And he was also very inspirational and always there. If I needed something, he's uh, actually a, um, a strength and wellness coach. And he and uh, he really tried to, and he does a lot of physical therapy for people. And he he has actually helped me a lot with, with during my weight loss goals and stuff like that. So Doug is a really a great guy too, Doug Lawson. So plug there. But I also got to, I, I, Linda Sullivan would kill me if I didn't plug her book, Old School. Um, uh, that that Kevin's mind and stories that Kevin has amassed and stories of pro wrestling over the years have filtered into Linda Sullivan's ear and out the other and onto paper in a book called Old School. How do you like that? How do you like the way I sell things? Huh? Where do you get Old School at, Andrew? Old School is, I'm going to read it to you, Old School Ring Squared is a fictionalized tale of professional wrestling's exclusive popularity during its early years. Uh, its story parallels television expansion after World War II. It's basically about mob connections, fixed matches, and legends. And it, when you read it, the names have been changed to protect the people involved. But basically, <laughs> there you'll recognize everyone from Fritz to Vince to, to to Paul Bosch to everybody in this book if you read it. So, do you get it on Amazon too? You can get it on Amazon. He's so, a big promoter of Amazon, everybody. He likes yeah. to kill small businesses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? It's just, just that the things I promote, a lot of them are, they're available on Amazon. If people want to know where to get it, I say go to Amazon. It's just a lot easier for them to go out and get it. You know. I mean, I can't knock you. I would be lying if I said I don't order stuff from Amazon. I think, you, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but it's like, I mean, you, it's almost stupid financially if you don't sometimes. Yeah. That's just yeah. the truth. So you're gonna love this. So you 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 have a um, a comic book collectible store. Absolutely, and I I, do. I, I also have Double A Toys, which I do out of out of small conventions across the country when I'm making appearances only in New Jersey because I don't want to lug my crap everywhere. 
And over the years, I've amassed in the wrestling business, I've amassed a lot of toys and memorabilia and a lot of comic books and stuff and superhero and monster stuff that I've collected. Some stuff I've bought in doubles and triples because, you know, at the time, you know, when we had, um, what would you call it, um, um, uh, disposable income, we used it on stupid things. So I had a lot. So my, my, a lot of my stuff came. Yeah, I never buy anything important. It's yeah. always something stupid. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, 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 you're going to appreciate this. So I, I, I got this little creature from the Black Lagoon, Bendy, that I got at CVS for a dollar twenty-five after Halloween last year. I sold it for forty-five bucks. The first oh, one, wow. forty-five bucks, at Children's Theater, and then all of a sudden, everybody was coming back saying, "I heard you got a creature from the Black Lagoon." So I went back and I sold the second one for seventy-five. So it just uh, so that's you quite the markup. Floor owner. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, little things like that, you know. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, I, I a lot of people know me as a toy collector and 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 uh, Marvel Comics aficionado. You know, I, I've been huge on that. And uh, but so, uh, who's your favorite Marvel character? Captain America, all the way. Really interesting. Yeah, you know, I don't even know. I'm not a super big Marvel person. You're a DC. I'd probably say, I'd probably say Superman. Yeah, Superman's great. Superman's cool. You know, we can't go... I know Superman's not Marvel, people. Come on, I know that. No, I, I, know, I would say but... probably Spider-Man. I liked Spider-Man a lot Everybody... growing up. And I used to love the 90s, like, X-Men cartoon. Love that cartoon. Oh, yeah. They're, 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 that, that, that's some really cool stuff, you know? So, uh, you know. Lurby1963 said, um, so how about the female wrestlers that were in SWE? How, who would you like to see out of that roster? Miranda uh, Gordy. Miranda Gordy, definitely Miranda Gordy. You know, um, Miranda Gordy is, is amazing. I mean, uh, she's just a talented girl. Eva Lise was amazing, too. Eva Lise was just amazing, too. And uh, You know, we've had both of them. And, and, you know, I was actually just talking to Tom earlier today, and we were talking about Eva Lise. And, uh, you know, to me, it, it's sad that she has a bad name amongst a lot of people because to me and Tom both, we couldn't say enough nice things about Eva Lise. Like, Sweetheart. I thought Elise was great every single time. I think she's worked for me three or four times. You know, one of the times uh, she wrestled Gail Kim for the first time, and it yep. was amazing. Great and match. I really love and I think should be part of the roster. And I, I, I'm Malaya Hosaka. She is right there with the best. I mean, she she is she's the queen of women's wrestling right, right, right next after Jazz. Jazz is the legend, and Malaya is right there right next to her in my eyes because Malaya has been around the world, has done it all, and, and – Malay is a, a very talented and underrated uh, performer and wrestler, and she's a very tough girl. She knows, she knows uh, the business in and out, and uh, and uh, you know I just think she's a great athlete, you know, and she could train a lot of the younger girls, um, bringing them up in the business. I mean that's the way you know it used to be, and that's the way I think it still should be to a to a degree, you know. So because when I remember when I when I was in the business now. Uh, when I was breaking into the business, I think I think most of the guys who worked on top were a lot older than me. That's for sure. You know, it wasn't like that. Now all the young guys are working on top, and that's why I think it was a lot of a lot of the business has kind of like deteriorated to it to a to a degree where it is now, where it's all high it's spots. Nine day different. It's changed so much. Yeah, psychology psychology wise, it's changed. You know, psychology wise, it has changed. I mean, you I mean, you had you have you have some guys. I mean, I'm not. I'm tooting the SWE horn and I'm tooting the world class horn over here. We got guys like, like, like uh, Max Castellano and, and uh, Moonshine Mantel and, uh, and Niles Ponke, guys like that, that had a lot of talent, you know, more talent than I think the other guys that are working on top in all the major companies, you know what I'm saying? I'm, if you ask me, I mean, that's just a shameless plug for not because they're friends of mine, but because I see talent and, and a lot of potential and that's God's honest truth, you know? So, and of course you got that big, old, big old mass monster, the blood hunter, who's going to be uh, actually uh, with me in my corner sometimes with Kevin Sullivan, you know, part of the army. Yeah. I tell you what, like in my opinion, blood hunter is one of the most intimidating wrestlers oh, yeah. in the world today. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Me and him went at it in the battle Royal a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So uh, for the, uh, for the Texas title before I'm Gangrel, I'm not. Gangrel. Now I didn't forget that Dave Heath. You threw me out of that battle royal. Yeah, you know, we might have to revisit that too down the line. I, I'm a huge fan of Gangrel, always have been. Yeah, I mean, hell, you know, but that was uh that's all uh past history, whatever, you know. But um, but yeah, um 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to December 11th, you know, wrestling Star Wars coming back and Mark Lawrence and, uh, and, uh, and, and Eric Embry and Kevin Sullivan and, you know, just the, the, the whole, the whole roster. I mean, it's just amazing. You know, it's just amazing. I mean, there's a lot of great uh, talent on there. Uh, Jason I, said, by the way, he loves your guitar. Yeah. Uh, Jason said, I, loves the guitar. Tell him I said, thank you. And he said, uh, yes, unfinished business, and uh, we need to talk to Enzo about finishing that with Warsaw. And, and you know, I think that would be great, too. Definitely, definitely. Because, you know, I mean, uh, I mean there, was, there was a lot of special things that went on there. You know, there, you guys were so good at sh the shock factor, you know, things that, uh, you know, like the, uh, the crazy thing, you know, like with Charlie Haas and Rodney and the fan, Hannibal, mm -hmm. uh you know, getting into it with, with uh, big casts on the, the podcast. I mean, just mm -hmm. things that really made you think about the golden years of wrestling, because it seems like, like we touched on a minute ago, wrestling has gotten away from uh, what made wrestling wrestling, you know, it's, um, yeah, you, and I'm not, I'm not know, knocking you, the newer talent. I'm not knocking. No. They can do, they can do things that I can never do on my best day. <laughs> yeah, I but, agree. That I, never do but all to those me flips. there was something about growing up and having this emotional connection with these people you know it's like uh, you know because obviously you know hulk hogan was my dude sting was my dude and uh, yep. you know by the way sting will be joining us in february in wichita and you know that can't wait to have stinger back always uh a real big blessing to have sting you know um guy man guy very humble Oh yeah, well, you know, I, to me, I always, I was just telling somebody the other day, I was like, Sting is the perfect example of how everybody in wrestling should act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, he is and, uh, a complete gentleman. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Sting and I, we 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 got got along really good. We did a couple of Legends of Wrestling shows a few years ago for Brian Knobs, and uh, uh, yeah. it was great being with him. And you know, I mean, we 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 shared a couple of cab rides from the airport and. We've talked in locker rooms before and stuff like that. He's a really good guy, really good guy. I mean, I never worked him, but I would love to someday, you know, since he's back in the ring, you know. You know, great seeing Brian doing better. Uh, what was that story? You posted something about you were at a convention with him or something, and you ribbed him so good. Tell everybody that story. I thought that was hilarious. Well, it goes back to the picture. The picture – called the bat cave as joe laurinaitis called it <laughs> you see the the story with the picture of knobs mooning knobs mooned his uh new moon sat moon sags and sags took a picture of it and they sent it to bret hart for bret hart's birthday with a happy birthday to bret of course bret being a heart he sent it to Nightheart, who sent it to to uh to, to harry smith who sent it to beefcake who sent it to steamboat who sent it to this one and that one eventually it wound up in my hands i printed it out after already went viral i printed about five copies of it out and i put one under each stack of knobs's pictures under the first picture at the convention that we were signing at so whoever took the first picture or knobs took the first picture to sign for them there would be a big bright brown hairy asshole sticking up looking at everybody so, with the words "knobs asshole" written underneath it, and knobs lady picks it up and she picks up the picture. Says, "I want this one." She goes, "Oh wait, I want this one." Knobs looks up and goes, "What?" She goes, "I went down." He goes, he looks over at me and goes, "Drew, you better put that away. I can't believe what the fuck." And then he looks over at the lady. And goes, he goes, she, he goes, Vince's car key, limo's car keys fell out of that. So did the remote from the Holiday Inn. <laughs> Without missing a beat, he worked the gimmick. It was one of the oh. funniest. But it went down as one of the funniest ribs I've ever done, you know. I mean, I mean, fuck. We we've done. We, at one time, one of our drivers was driving, and uh, <laughs> Sags, Sags turns around. He, the guy stops to take a piss, and Sags, Sags, wipes his ass with uh with it with with a towel, and then rubs it all over the driver's steering mm -hmm. wheel. <laughs> steering. The driver comes in and goes, looks at me and goes, "I'm having a. I, I really don't feel well." He goes. Goes, gives me the keys, goes, can you just drive? And I look over at the guy and I'm like, and Sags is in the back laughing. The guy goes, I really, I, he goes, I got something on my eye, I can't drive. And, and I'm like, he's giving me the keys and Sags and knobs are rolling the back. And, and I'm like, because he had no idea that there was ass all over the wheel, you know? 
And I'm like, I'm not touching that thing. But man, I got I got tons of stories of those guys, man. Oh, you know, man. I'm so not surprised. The we shit hung out with them. Me and, done to each other. Me and the, oh, the they're they're truly the nasty boys. Oh, they are. They're foul, but they're so great at it that you can't you can't be mad at them. You know. So you know me, Lisa Marie, uh, Chavo. We watched WrestleMania, whatever WrestleMania was in New Orleans with them, because we were all there for WrestleCon mm -hmm. or whatever. And afterwards, uh, Chavo's like, oh, yeah, they want to come hang out with us. And I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> so we go back to like our Airbnb, which uh, was under Jack Swagger's name, Jake Hager. And um, they take turns like juvenile children blowing up the bathroom. <laughs> and I'm just like, these are grown, grown ass men. Oh, you can't. And, oh, and, well, Sags comes out. And he's like, well, you know, like, you ran out of toilet paper. And I'm like, well, I don't live here. Uh, he's like, well, don't worry about it. I just wiped my ass with the towel. It's funny because <laughs> you said that. And he's like, so don't worry about it. And I'm like, why would you use somebody else's towel when you know this is not our house? <laughs> and then, because he, he's like, don't worry about it. You can go get it. I threw it behind the bathtub. And I'm like. <laughs> Oh, that's a typical oh. nasty story. And, you know, so the next day, I mean, since it was in Jake's name, you know, we get up and we're about to leave and stuff. And Chavo's was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I guess I'm going to go in the bathroom and get that towel and throw it away so Jake doesn't get in any trouble over this. So I go in there and I dig behind the, the bathtub and I grab this nasty towel that has shit all over it. And I go throw it in the trash can outside. And it was funny because uh, we were we were doing a, a show a couple of weeks later and Jr. was on it. And Raphael Morphy, which is the AEW touring director, but he's Jr.'s assistant uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes up and he and he hands me a Legends of Wrestling T-shirt. And he's like, hey, Brian Knobs wanted me to give you a gift. And, I, you know, I'm expecting like another shitty towel or something. <laughs> <laughs> And he hands me the Legends of Wrestling shirt, and he's like, he said, sorry for how they acted. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had the pleasure of hanging out with them since. But, you know, well, you you brought up that story, and I'm like, they really are the nasty boys. Like, some people live the gimmick. You know, Ric Flair lives the gimmick. So do the nasty boys. Boys do. Knobs is toned down a lot, but I'm I'm sure it's it's only because he stopped drinking, but he'd stop drinking I, I i've been with him. he sobered up a while ago he's doing great now and thank god but when he lost weight a few years back he sobered up not drinking but he was still nasty knobs either way he was just a little more articulate uh, than you, <laughs> you know i remember that weekend too uh we were sitting there and i was talking to, to mean gene uh because mean gene was really you know he really helped me out a lot and really invested in me personally and I was like, uh, he's like, let me know where you guys are going later. So originally we were supposed to be going to the piano bar. And uh, I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to go watch a WrestleMania at this piano bar, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, the nasty boys at a piano bar. And I was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, damn, we really are getting old. He goes, it used to be the nasty boys at Metallica, but now it's the nasty boys at the piano bar. And he just thought it was so hilarious. <laughs> Stuff, stuff hasn't has changed, but hasn't changed, you know. Now we'll just uh, tear up the piano, you know. So, you know, it, it's funny now, you know, uh, wrestling. Uh, people, you know, there's a lot of crap that comes along with wrestling, but so many wonderful moments, so many great stories. Who, who do you think, like, uh, who's your best friends in the business? My best friends in the business? Well, the Nasty Boys, two of them, uh, Knobs and Sags, and uh, um, the nasty obviously Kevin. I love Kevin Sullivan. I, I'm close with Hacksaw still. I mean, uh, I saw Hacksaw. Man, how's he doing? Have you talked to Hacksaw? I haven't talked to him. So I saw him the week before he went in for his prostate surgery. We did uh, we did uh, Hazard Con together. We did Hazard Fest together in uh, in Tennessee, in Greenville, Tennessee. And uh, I haven't seen him since. I messaged him a few times, and I guess he's doing all right. You know, I, um, you know, it's just it's it's a tough thing. You know, I mean. It's, it's one of those things. Another one of my best friends, though, is Crowbar, Chris Ford. He's another great guy I'm friends with for years. He was also my physical therapist uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago when I tore my ACL. So he really was responsible for getting me back 
you know, in the swing of things, you know, and uh, I mean, I mean, look, I, I, I lost a lot of my, my best friends, you know what I'm saying? Joe Laurinaitis, Jimmy Snuka, Nikolai Volkov, uh, God, the, 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 the list goes on. I mean, it just, it's really been, been tough, you know. I'm cl- really close with Alpha Jr. Um, you know, he wrestled as a Samoan Storm um, Manu, Manu in uh, WWE for a while, part of Legacy with, with Cody Rhodes and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Ted DiBiase Jr. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm really tight with Alpha. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be wrestling Alpha on, uh, on Friday night in Franklin, New Jersey. Um, uh, what, on what the, company uh, is that? Where can they watch it Um, well, I don't, I don't know if it's being aired live, but it's at uh, uh, East Coast Pro Wrestling Friday, November twelfth at the Franklin Elementary School Gym, uh, fifty Washington Avenue in Franklin. I'll be wrestling Alpha Junior. Um, I think Ricky Reyes is all, also on the card. Another talented worker, uh, awesome. Ricky Reyes. Ricky Reyes, Ricky Reyes. Ricky Ricky yeah, f- fantastic worker. Um, and then uh, I'll be. On the following night, on the the 13th, I will be in, let's see, where am I going to be on the 13th? I'm going to be uh, working for New Evolution Wrestling at the the Queensboro Elks Lodge that uh, um, ECW made famous uh, years ago at the Queensboro Elks Lodge. And I'm wrestling a good friend of yours and mine, Mr. Sam Houston. Ah, Sam Houston, yes. Yes. Sam, me and Dancing Sam are going to dance all around the building. So man, I remember Sam just randomly shoot, showed up at one of our shows, and uh, it, it was really funny because he's like, "Yeah, you know, like Sam Houston." And I'm like, "Really? Like you just <laughs> randomly show up?" And, and he did, and he's such a nice dude, such Great a guy. good dude. We just happened to just be got- around his hometown, and just such a nice dude. You know, just it was really sad married. to watch that dark side of the ring about him, Jake, and, and Robin Jake and-, and his family. You know that. Was, that was a really upsetting episode. I think though, you know, if there's anything to be learned from that, you know, don't, don't judge people because you don't know their stories and you don't know yep. what they've been through. And, and, you know, especially during Jake's rough parts of his life, I think so many people were quick to judge him, you know, uh, what, uh, beyond the mat. Yeah. Beyond the mat definitely didn't do him any favors. It, you know, I, I remember watching that thinking it was just trash. Yeah. You know, yeah. who capitalizes on somebody's life like that? I think that movie hurt the business. Absolutely. So. I don't, I, I, you know, I hope they made a lot of money off of it and it's worth what they did to everybody that was involved in it. Yeah. I think it really hurt the business a lot. I especially hurt the reputation of the business to a degree. The people that were in it, it hurt the reputation bad. You know, I mean, what they did to Jake was just unfathomable to me. I don't know why you would think that's okay. Yeah. That was not, that was not right. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't care for that movie. So, you know, I, I do enjoy most of the dark side of the rings. Wasn't a super fan of the plane ride from hell just because of the repercussions that were. Yeah, you know, it, it became part of the, the, the me movement, the, 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 what would you call it? Uh, just all of a sudden it just became. Uh, the cancel culture, the, the word woke, else. woke, whatever it's called. I yeah. mean, it's pretty simple. If you don't want to listen to something, don't listen to it. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. You don't have it's to. Pretty you know, simple. If you're yeah. a part of that culture, or if you're trying to wake up, or be woke, or what, whatever, it's that simple. It's hard, man. It's hard now. I mean, now nowadays, I mean, it's, look, look, uh, the stuff that everybody did over the years, and all of a sudden now it's coming back to haunt them over. You know, I mean, that plane ride from hell was, I think, 19 years ago. I could be wrong. Yeah, 21 and, years was, yeah, something like that. And, you know, it's not like, I'm not sitting here condoning people's actions, but, you know, I would be interested to know, you know, Tommy Dreamer lost his job over that. And yeah. I'm, I've never heard anything bad about Tommy Dreamer from people no. inside the business. Tommy's a great guy. Tommy's always been a great guy. He's always been really, he's been, he's been a good friend to me over the years. And, you know, I can't, I, I can't understand how the backlash hit him so bad because he gave an opinion. Well, my thing is, you don't know how that show's put together. You don't know that Tommy was even given any knowledge of anybody else's interview that was on that show. Yeah. Well, you know, I, he, he gave his opinion. Guess what? He's entitled to an opinion. He wasn't the one that was on that did any of that stuff on there. That was not no. him. So, you know, uh, like it was beyond me that he just lost his job. Over it. You I, know, I mean, if anything, I mean, okay. Reprimanding for a couple of weeks, whatever, but, the more that 
people succumb to this stuff, the more it's going to keep happening. Well, I, for one, am going to watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer this year. Oh, which one? The classic one? Classic one, because, I mean, they're saying that that was going to be part of cancel culture, too. And uh, you can't listen to um, uh, Baby, It's Cold Outside by uh, by Dean Martin because it's a date rates, rape song. And all this stuff was like all of a sudden. But those two things, I mean, I, I just... I mean, I'm ne- I've never been a fan of Baby, It's Cold Outside, but I love Rudolph. <laughs> I love Dean Martin. So I love Rudolph and Dean Martin. Christmas without Dean Martin is not. I used to love the Dean Martin Christmas specials. I was always a big fan of Rudolph, and then every year I watch uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol and oh. uh, Home Alone. <laughs> I like the Charlie Brown thing. I yeah, know. like you know, Charlie Brown, man. You, you know, we definitely grew up amongst the best of everything. In my yeah, opinion. we did. We yeah. definitely did. March of the Wooden Soldiers, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Do you remember that? Yes, absolutely. Yep. I used to be on every Christmas. You know what I used to remember up here in New York? I don't know if you guys had it in 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 the in, in the in the the Southwest, but we always used to have a Thanksgiving time. They always used to have King Kong, um, Son of Kong, and Mighty Joe Young on every <laughs> King Kong and Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> King Kong, Son of Kong, and Mighty Joe Young every Thanksgiving morning. It would be like a. It, it was right after Thanksgiving Day Parade went off the air. That was on. You watch that. That was when I was a kid. That was like big. And then, and March of the Wooden Soldiers, and then it was it was always it was always had some kind of holiday traditions on these local channels. You know, I mean, it was pretty cool growing up. It was it was a good time to be growing up when I I, I just remember all that stuff. I mean, look, we loved Looney Tunes. Now the same years later, Looney Tunes are too violent. You can't watch it. Pepe Le Pew is canceled. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's. You know, my favorite thing about the Pepe Le Pew situation was I read somebody's post and they were like, y'all mad at Pepe Le Pew for chasing the same girl for 40 years. Y'all can't chase the same girl for 40 seconds. And I was like, <laughs> you can't, you can't. I mean, you know, it, to me, it's crazy, man. You know, like, and it hurts the younger generation now, you know, like that's what's sad. It's sad for all the kids in the world that they're going through what we're living in now and, and they can't live as free as what we did. You know, you can't even like being, you know, like, like our kids, I, I wouldn't let them run around the neighborhood period. No, you can't, you can't let anybody go out anymore. You don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, a, we used to leave our doors locked. You can't do that anymore. You know, you, yeah, can't, you, know, you, I mean, you know, what's wild is uh, the neighborhood that I live in now, it's one of the few neighborhoods where you can still do that. But overall, you know, like a, in my old house, I would never let my kid go outside by himself, period. <laughs> you See, I had to sell my father's house because of that. I got rid of my father's house that I still owned. That's because the neighborhood went went to crap in Jersey. It was just horrible. You know, I mean, sad how things how things progress. Things things sometimes things are not always changing for the better. You know what I'm saying? So there's old saying things change for the better. Not all the time. Not everything. Yeah. And it seems like in a lot of ways we've regressed lately. You know, but world class is changing for the better. <laughs> you, you know, I'm really looking forward to our future. I think uh, 2022 is going to be uh, the best work that we've ever done. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. before before we get off here too, we didn't even touch on your acting career. Oh, Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your acting background? Because I think it's amazing. I think it's very cool you were in the wrestler, just right. as cool you were in Gotham. Like, tell everybody about that, because to me, that's just as interesting as the wrestling stuff. I got a call to Gotham. My, 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 my agent, my manager called me up. They said, my, my, my manager, uh, Pat Horgan, said, he goes, we got a bucket list for you. And as a matter of fact, funny thing you should mention, Gotham, because he said, we got a bucket list for you. We have uh, Gotham and Daredevil. They were both running on uh, – Daredevil was on Netflix. Uh, did you tell them that Gotham is not Marvel, so you couldn't do it? Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that because I'm still enjoying that royalty check. So, you know, but, <laughs> uh, so I went and I did Gotham and I got on Gotham. And then all of a sudden he said, we have another bucket list to do. He goes, you going to audition. So I auditioned for the role of Ox for Daredevil and I got it. And then all of a sudden Netflix canceled because Disney streaming took over and Marvel canceled Daredevil, even though it was successful, a successful run. But now from what I understand, they're bringing it back and my manager is in tight with the producers of it and, um, I have a chance to come back as Ox, but with a new version of Dare, Daredevil, and uh, and back on that show. So, and if not Ox, another character because Daredevil has a ripe rogues gallery of villains, and 
I happen to fit into a lot of villainous characters. Would you think this face is a villain? Never. Not no. once in my life. No, <laughs> not me. I'm not that guy. Am I? Purple haze. You know, your work in Gotham was amazing, too. Like, you looked the part. You know, you did great in it. Jerry, let me put it this way. People who say that acting is a lot easier bump than wrestling, bullshit. I bumped <laughs> 52 times in that scene before they got it right. I bumped 52 times with a leather jacket on, knee pads, and I was taking back bumps on concrete in a garage, getting shot by Selena every time after Catwoman whipped out my shot and Selena shot me. I want to be, they want to, using the two scenes where I got shot and hit the back of a 57 Chevy and slide down and die, but never died because my character was, was brought back. But that sh shot, that scene where I shot and slid off the back of the 57 Chevy was the one that was used after 47 times. I took 47 bumps on the concrete. So, I mean, that took a lot out of me, man. I remember going home. I don't, I, I think I slept for three days. I couldn't walk. It was like I, you would have thought I had a 24-hour Broadway match. 24-hour Broadway match. That's how bad I felt. I mean, so what about the like, wrestler and working with Mickey Rourke? That was great. Mickey was great. Mickey was so great. And uh, I want to thank Alpha Senior Pops uh, for, for actually putting that together with Evan Ginsberg and Darren Aronofsky because they got me into that. And Darren was the one who, the director was the one who told me that I have a bright future in, in the acting business ahead of me. And he was the one who really put me over, and he's the one who really uh, pushed me into the acting world. And uh, the Skittles, Doritos commercial. You guys well. are still at it, are you? There he yeah, is. There he is. Hannibal is back. Hannibal, yeah. I got to tell you something. You have a date with Destiny. Dr. Caprio is going to be giving you your stem cells and me my stem cells in my wrist for my tendon. He already did my shoulder twice. He's going to be doing your shoulder. Uh, Hannibal is coming to New Jersey from Canada. Beware. Beware, because the Purple Haze is going to be meeting with Hannibal. And, uh, you know, I, I just hope you tell that big, nasty blood hunter that I need him as a tag team partner down the road. So, just for the record, me Yeah, you, you got to talk to Kevin about that, because uh, Kevin and Blaze manage his affairs. Yep, yep. And, and Kevin already told me that the blood hunter's got my back. So, I'm looking forward to that one, you know? I mean, but in the meantime, me and Hannibal are going to have a good time in Jersey, because... After we got our stem cells and we start regenerating our broken up tissue, we're going to go and have some sushi at that famous sushi place that I always go to. So, um, so Hannibal has a date with the reinforcer over there, having a good time, man, back in Jersey. So and I, I'm looking forward to making sure that you're, you're uh, the most important thing is that you get yourself put back together and that you uh, take it easy there. Big boy, killing yourself in the gym. You know, I know what it's like. I have a... I, I got yelled at for working my shoulder after the stem cells. That's why I had to go for a second round because you're not supposed to do anything physical for a while after you get them in. You have to let them settle in and take place. Are you listening so, to that, Hannibal? Yeah, it went in I, out the other. <laughs> he should be well, taking it easy, but he just got done working out, everyone. That's why he didn't join us tonight. He should be resting, but instead he's working out. <laughs> I had to fit it in because I'm hitting the road tomorrow and I'm not going to have time. So I have Does anybody to know if the dungeon right the corner. do what? what happened? I just said December 11th is right around the corner. So it I is. That and, and Andrew come into that event uh, back at Southern Junction where Andrew's had a lot of good matches. So it's, it's exciting. Oh yeah. It's Does anybody it. know, is the dungeon of doom trademarked? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I know the Army of Darkness isn't. I don't think the Army of Darkness is. There we go. That's the one hundred. Cut Andrew out. Put that flyer up. Yep. Yeah. Hey Andrew, you actually made the flyer at a good spot. Yeah. You know what? Somebody actually had the had. The, can you believe that I made a flyer? That I made the flyer? Did, is Jason Jarrett watching this? Jason. Air five. He put me on the flyer. You know. Look at that. You know. It's the analytics. The analytics must have said that I'm, I belong on a flyer. You know yeah. what's crazy is I just realized yesterday when I was putting together some other marketing materials that I totally left Moonshine off of it on accident. Well, and Moonshine is AEW this week. Didn't he just wrestle uh, Wardlow on Ward Dark? Wardlow. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really want to see that. I bet that was probably, well, I don't know if Wardlow can hang with, with Moonshine, but if he can, I bet that was a good match. 
You know, in all honesty, Moonshine is twice the worker. Nothing against Wardlow, but Moonshine is twice the worker. Yeah, Moonshine's amazing. He's an amazing athlete. Great talent. So. Oh, yeah. I think he's uh, one of the best around right now, for sure. So, hey, um, uh, you know who else I'm trying to get to come into uh, to Jersey to get his stem cells? Rene Dupree, another mutual friend of mine in Hannibal's. Um, ah, I'm, yes. I'm Rene trying to get Dupree and Rob Conway. Yes. Yep. I'm very, trying to get much to bring them in. So I right. love La Resistance. Yep. <laughs> I think I think Rene. Uh, you know what I would love to see? What? La Resistance against Hannibal uh, uh, against uh, um, uh, up in. Uh, Great, Greater Northwest Wrestling, La Resistance against each other for uh, for Hannibal's Greater Northwest Wrestling. Apparently, yeah. well, apparently, Sylvain Grenier inherited two million from Pat Patterson, so uh, that one's out of the question. But I guess Rob Conway uh, and Renee could go at it. Ron, Rob Conway versus Renee Dupree would be interesting too. I don't think they've ever fought, have they? I don't think so. No, that would be an amazing match. I would like to see that. You know. <laughs> Or maybe I know it's funny. I have Bud Hunter Grenier, by the way, just for the record, for anyone that doesn't know that. I well, maybe the Bud and Andrew Anderson against Rene Dupree and, and, uh, and Rob Conway. I don't think Rene Dupree wants any more of the Blood Hunter after what happened. <laughs> I saw that. I remember watching that match, and I was just like, there was like three or four times in that match, I was like, hmm. <laughs> it actually aired on Pro Wrestling Noah's uh, streaming service this week where uh, Rene Dupree works for Pro Wrestling Noah. He's under contract there, and that company has a lot of buzz these days. So, Wow. You, you know what I want to see? I want to see PCO and the Blood Hunter. You know, funny story when we were at WrestleCon a couple of years ago, you know, I don't really get that excited about, you know, it, it's random things, you know, like Law Resistance. We're sitting there and and I was like, oh, 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 my God. Chavo's like, what? And I was like, can you let me have a moment? Like, go back to signing your autographs. PCO just walked in, bro. And he's like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, I'm dead serious. Sign your autographs. Let me look at PCO for a minute. <laughs> you know who I want? You know who I want in world class? I want to I want to match with Crowbar. I want to match with Crowbar. Because me and him have unsettled business. And we have well, also a match where he had. We, we didn't had. he just wrestle in AEW? Yes, he did with AEW, but I think he's still available. I think I think he should have a match with the Purple Haze. Well, what about the Godwins versus the Blood Hunter and Purple Haze? Are they still that's wrestling? A dream, that's a dream match. Are they still wrestling? They'll come out of retirement for that. Don't ask silly questions. I okay. don't know. I'm with the Godwin. I think Phineas is a cook now. Is it really? Yeah. Well, see, he can cook p people food before the match. It'll work out great. <laughs> He's got catering already figured out, Hannibal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, just different pig dishes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. That's well, funny. You guys, close this off because I'm going to drive home. I'm getting hungry. And you were talking about right. sushi there. That's making me even more hungry. I know. Well, I haven't I'm ate yet either. Andrew, plug your I'm, social I'm, media and stuff for everybody I'm, watching. I'm, um, I'm, I'm wrestling uh, uh, November 19th. I'm working at ISPW, uh, Totowa, New Jersey, at the PAL. Um, it's also uh, affiliated with a store in Jersey, um, um, the Wrestling Collector Store, Route 23 in Stockholm, New Jersey. Um, great guy, great friend of mine, Tommy Fierro, runs the building. He's also running Brought Back ISPW, which is an old-school wrestling company, which was around in the 80s and the 90s, and, and uh, well, the 90s and uh into the early millennium and, and they're back in full force. And uh, I'm in that Royal Rumble for the heavyweight title on the 19th in Totalwood, New Jersey at the PAL. Um, like I said, November 13th, uh, New Evolution Wrestling at the Queensboro Elks Lodge. I'm wrestling Sam Houston. I'm wrestling Alpha Junior this Friday, November 12th in Franklin, New Jersey at the Franklin Elementary School. Um, also, I'll be at the, the, on December 19th, I'll be at the Allentown, Pennsylvania, um, Fairview Fire Company with Kevin Sullivan, with Vampiro, with a bunch of other, um, uh, The Godfather, all doing a signing over there. Um, you can also get my T-shirts at www.prowrestlingtees.com slash Andrew Anderson. So pick up your exclusive Andrew Anderson tees there. You can also catch me, get uh, uh, meet me at cameo.com slash The Reinforcer. I'll do a meet and greet for you via, virtually um, through Cameo, uh, birthday parties, birthday wishes, 
anything, you know, I'll do anything. I'll even marry if I had, if I can, you know, do it virtually say, you know, do you take this to be your wedded look bride, whatever you want to be? I can't say man or woman because I'll get canceled. So I'm not going to say, do you take that person to be your local, your, your lovely wedded bride or groom, whatever, but I would do whatever I can on cameo. You, you name it, you want it. Just preferably not funerals. I don't do funerals well. I don't want to start crying, and you know, when I start crying, then you know, <laughs> the eyes get a little red. And is that a beer or is that a Coke? That is a Dr. Pepper. That's a Dr. Pepper. That's the man right there. I love, I, I prefer a diet Dr. Pepper, but I, I'm a Dr. Pepper. The fan. greatest 23 flavor concoction known to man. Once again, SSP Nutrition. Go to SSP Nutrition. Uh, look for it on uh, Amazon.com. Old school, Linda Linda Taylor Sullivan, uh, old school on Amazon Amazon.com Amazon Amazon. Real stories, but the names have been changed to protect the innocent. The identities of those involved, and uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, November twenty sixth, twenty seventh, twenty eighth. The reinforcer Andrew Anderson and the Taskmaster Kevin Sullivan will be appearing at Wrestlecade, and uh. I think that's pretty much it. I think we pretty much go oh, Friday, December 13th. It's Friday, December 3rd, Rochelle Park, Knights of Columbus, Andrew Anderson will be appearing for East Coast Pro Wrestling. So, and you can catch me on my social media at on uh, Instagram at Andrew the Reinforcer, uh, on Facebook as Andrew dot the Reinforcer dot Anderson, and uh, Drew the Wrestler on Twitter. So, and you can also catch me in two of the hottest companies on the. Uh, in the United States, I'll, I'll just say it that way, CWF Reloaded and World Class Wrestling Revolution. So the rebirth of Championship Wrestling from Florida and the rebirth of World Class are in the form of Championship Wrestling from Florida Reloaded and World Class Championship Wrestling, World Class Revolution. So re World Class Wrestling Revolution. And Jerry Bostic, let's go out there and give everybody a run for their money. Let's kick ass, take some names. We got some great talent. I'm so happy to have my friend Charlie Haas back on board. Um, love Rodney Mack. Love the cast of characters that you have. I'm proud to be joining this team. Um, Hannibal, thank you so much for all you've done for me. Can't wait to work with Likewise. the Blood Devil. Can't wait to work with the Blood Hunter and the Devil. And looking forward to working for you. And as Ace Forelli said, rock soldiers. <laughs>